are you ready to find out the best performing stocks in my portfolio? Even in this bear market, these stocks have been on fire. I'm going to be sharing the top 10 returns, and if you stick around until the end, I'll even tell you the three stocks that made my haul of shame. So get ready for some serious stock market action. Holy banana bread, let's do this. We are going to find out in this video which stocks have been setting the stock market ablaze. Even in a bear market, some of my stocks have been exploding with returns. I'm going to be showing you the top 10 winners, and if you stick right around till the very end, you're also going to find out which three stocks made my haul a shame. Get ready for some serious stock market action. I can almost guarantee you'll be impressed by some of these returns. Let's find out which stocks are really heating the things up. Before we turn up the heat, tell me in the comments if you have any total return superstars steaming up your portfolio. Well, thank you for dropping in on the home of free financial content on YouTube. While you are here, please like and subscribe as you don't want to miss a single moment and a huge thank you for that click. I am so excited to get into this content. These 10 stocks are ranked 100% on their total returns. So basically, their share growth and dividends all added into the math. You just have to love numbers. They are always so reliable. You can kind of count on them. The data pulled for these calculations are for one year. So from January 25th, 2022 until January 20th of 2023. These dividends will also factor in any bonus dividends that some of these companies may or may not have received. Okay, let's jump in and see just how hot hot can get. Kicking off our list at number 10 is a big community favorite, and that is the Canoe EIT Income Fund, which has a ticker of EIT.UN. Yep, I'm pretty sure a few of you thought it was going to be higher, but, well, it's number 10. They are based out of Calgary, and they are a fund primarily invested in energy, financials, and healthcare. Turning it back 365, Canoe was priced at $12.60, and they closed a year later at $13.71 for, well, an 8.81% growth in their share price. During that same time, they provided an extra $1.20 in dividends per share. When we factor those dividends in, well, we get a total return of 18.33%. That's not too shabby. Canoe is a stock that I expect much of the same from in 2023 and beyond. They have smart management and a very proactive approach to mitigating potential market downturns, including a potential recession. Moving on up to number nine is the only REIT to make the list, and it is the slate grocery REIT with a ticker of SGR.UN. They are based out of Toronto and they are primarily invested in American grocery anchored retail spaces. Looking back, 365, Slate was priced at $14.15 and they closed a year later at $15.79 for 11.59% growth in their share price. Over that same time, they divvied out an extra $1.13 in dividends. When we add in those dividends, we get a total return of 19.58% nice. These returns are already mind-numbing and we're only just beginning still. Wow. Slate Grocery REIT is actually quite smart as the smaller malls that surround grocery stores are offered a lot more foot traffic just because of their location. This is one sector of real estate that should remain stable even in the tougher times. At number eight is a personal favorite, and that is the Diversified Royalty, which is a ticker of DIV. They are based out of Vancouver, and they are a royalty company holding royalties for, well, Mr. Lube and Air Miles, just to name a couple. Pumping it back 365, Diversified Royalty was priced at $2.68, and they closed a year later at $3.18 for a 18.66% growth in their share price. At the same time, they had an extra 22 cents in dividends. When we factor in those dividends, we get a total return of 26.87%. Holy banana bread. Diversified Royalty is a stock that I have loved for some time. They are small, but they have very little overhead and debt, which makes them a reliable source of dividends. And now we move on to number seven, and we have Loblaws Companies, which is a ticker of L. They are based out of Brampton, Ontario, and they are one of Canada's biggest grocery chains. Taking a DeLorean back 365, Loblaws was priced at $92.10, and they closed a year later at $118.16 for a 28.30% growth in their share price. During that same time, they also provided an extra $1.58 in dividends for each of their shares. When we pull that all in together, we get a total return of 30.01%. That's not a bad number at all. Loblaws is in no real danger 
of slowing down. People will always need groceries and law bonds will be there to fill that need. I do think their share prices growth will be lower in the next year, but not enough to make them any less worthy in my portfolio. Hmm, I was about to order some pizza, but maybe we'll get to number six instead, which is Pizza Pizza Royalty Corp, with a ticker of PZA, PZA. <laughs> they are based out of Toronto, and they are a royalty company that holds the royalties for Pizza Pizza franchises. They do also own a few of those uh, franchises themselves. Circling back 365, Pizza Pizza was priced at $11.23, and they closed a year later at $13.82 for a 23.06% growth in their share price. During that same time, they gave out an extra 80 cents in dividends. When we add in those dividends, we get a total return of 30.19%. That may just be the perfect pizza. Pizza Pizza is a stock that is set up for success. They have consistent revenue from their royalties as well as from their own restaurants. Pizza is one of those comfort foods that people will still buy even in a recession. We just crossed the halfway mark and we have hit number five with Dollarama. They have a ticker of DOL. They are based out of Montreal and they are a chain of dollar stores that have prospered in the bear market. Turning the pages back 365, Dollarama was priced at $60.77 and they closed a year later at $82.63 for a 35.97% growth in their share price. During that same time, they gave an extra 22 cents in dividends. When we factor in those wee dividends, we get a total return of 36.33%. That is not a too shabby. Dollarama will continue to do very well as we move into a recession. This is a destination for people looking to save money and that is kind of where most people's mindsets are these days. Blazing into our fourth spot, we have Sir Royalty Income Fund. They are based out of Burlington, Ontario, and they are a fund primarily invested in the royalties and trademarks of big restaurant chains such as Jack Astor's and Midtown Taverns, just to name a couple. Stepping backwards, 365, Sir Royalty was priced at $11.98 and they closed a year later at, well, $16 and 24 cents for a 35.5 percent growth in their share price during that same time they also gave out an extra one dollar and 28 cents in dividends when we include those dividends we get a total return of 46.28 percent yeah these numbers are starting to get pretty impressive this is a stock that has been constantly surprising me in a good way it is hard to believe that it will keep growing as fast as it has but I do have the feeling its future growth will still be impressive. Coming in at number three is an ETF that I have been in love with, and it is the iShares S&P TSX Capped Energy Index with a ticker of XEG. They are based out of Toronto, and they are a fund primarily investing in the energy sector in both Canada and the United States. If we look back 365, XEG was priced at $11.19, and they closed a year later at $16.04 for a 43.34% growth in their share price. During that same time, they received an extra 52 cents in dividends. When we add that all together, we get a total return of 47.99%. Wow, there are still two stocks with higher numbers. Woo, this is gonna be good. XZG is a stock that has been on a fire for years, and it really doesn't look like it will slow down. It may sputter while oil is down, but once oil turns back up later this year, I expect XZG to wow me with some more. At our almost top spot, we have a freehold royalties with a ticker of FRU. They are based out of Calgary and they are a oil and gas sector royalty company that holds royalties on income producing oil and gas assets. If we pump back 365, Freehold was priced at $11.30 and they closed a year later at $15.79 for a 39.73% growth in their share price. During that same time, they also gave out an extra 97 cents in dividends. When we factor in those dividends, we get a total return of 48.32%. That is great! Freehold has benefited from the oil boom and has yet still done okay while oil has cooled off. With the oil sector set to pick up again later this year, Freehold will more than likely impress me even more. Coming in at our number one spot is no surprise as Tourmaline Oil with a ticker of TOU claims the crown. They are based out of Calgary and they are one of Canada's 
Canada's biggest oil and natural gas companies. If we cycle back 365, Tourmaline was priced at $41.75 and they closed a year later at $68.61 well, for a 64.34% growth in their share price. During that same time, they dropped dividends as well as special dividends that totaled up to $7.90 per share. When we factor that all in, we get a very, very nice total return of 83.26%. Holy friggin' banana bread! <laughs> wow, that's just a really good number. Tourmaline has already announced more special dividends in 2023, and there is no reason to doubt that this will be a stock topping the top in my portfolio for the next year. They have little debt, and they are poised to amaze us for at least the next year. There is very little not to love with this one. Those were some fantastic stocks. Now, let's uh, turn ourselves 360 and uh, we're going to take a look at that Hall of Shame. In position number three in the Hall of Shame, we have Hamilton Enhanced U.S. Covered Call ETF with a ticker of HYLD. I actually love this ETF, but so far it has been a loser in my portfolio. It began in February of 2022 as a brand new ETF priced at $16.08, and since then it's dropped down to $12.32. That is a 23.38% drop. They do, though, have a very good dividend, and that brought their total return to negative 14.6%. 68%, which was low enough for number three in the Hall of Shame. Overall, though, it is still doing better than the S&P 500, so it is not something I really worry too much about. They will recover when the market recovers. Coming in at our second spot in the Hall of Shame, we got Scotiabank with a ticker of BNS. They went from $87.27 down to $69.19 for a 20.72% drop. Their dividends did help a little and brought their total return to negative 17.17. This is a stock I am not too worried about. They are blue chip and their recovery will be fine. If anything, it is a chance to get a good discount on them. All right, that takes us to our top spot in the Hall of Shame. And that top spot goes to Canadian Western Bank with a ticker of CWB. This Western focused bank, though they are expanding more into Ontario, they began with a share price of $36.88 and they let it fall all the way down to $26.97 for a drop of 26.87%. Their dividend only helped the total return come in at negative 20 23.51%. I loved this bank a lot, but this drop does concern me and I will be looking forward to their next earnings report. Let me tell you, this is a stock I may have to consider breaking up with in the future. Long term, I still believe they will be okay, but maybe there are better options for my investment dollars that might bring me back a little bit of a better return. It does not have to end here. Check out my video on seven ways to get wrecked that I will link on the left. Otherwise, check out the video on the right that YouTube thinks you will like. Your click will decide who is right and I will see you in the next video.